Hello. Well, I thought it's time to do another look along the Prom of Douglas. This is with Chris Thomas, who's, uh, of course, the Minister for DOI, saying that uh, basically sign-off has arrived. So we've done quite a few of these, going back to Phil Gorn's day in this first section, of course. This is the bit that was done, and then everything sort of stopped. There was these sort of ideas were one thing, there were more reviews, there were more looks into it. And when we go over this crossing, which raises us up a bit, this is now the infamous bit. I say that only because of the, the reddish concrete in the middle, which I think in years to come will be still telling a story not necessarily the one they want, but uh, of course, at one stage, we assumed horse trams were going to go up on that bit, and now, of course, it's gone to the side. So we'll go down the side this way and then come back the other way. Um, you see all these loading bays? So we lost quite a lot of actual um, spaces on the prom. And there we go. Now that, of course, was a crossing. This one, the grey one, isn't a crossing as such. It's this shared space, I think, is probably the best way. If, if I see somebody on it, I would definitely hesitate because if they walked out, <laughs> I mean, you, you would be in problems, wouldn't you? So it's, it's like the roundels which are coming up now. What is exactly the law? I'm, I'm still not 100% certain if anyone knows who has got the right way. And I only say that because if there was an accident and you get insurance companies involved, somebody's got to be in the right, someone's got to be in the wrong. I had one here the other day, actually. I was turning down uh, to go up uh, Finch Road, and uh, this car just pulled out from where we're going now and gave me a, a, a terrible look. And I think, well, it, you've got to treat it like a roundabout, surely. I mean, it's those sort of rules. You give way to the right. Otherwise, you, you, anyone could just pull out. And I have seen that as well. People have just pulled out. I'm going, wow, wow, OK, that's a bit close. Um, anyway, so we're coming up to the villa, another crossing there. They don't look particularly very white already. Um, here is quite good because you've got lots of uh, disabled parking and uh, those sorts of spaces. Here's one of those, what is it? Is it, is it a walkway or not? Now, whatever you think about the roundels, and there's been many, many people talking about them before they even get in, just remember when these were traffic lights. It's the bane of my life, I'm sure of many, because traffic lights always slow things down. It's never happy. Coming down um, Broadway it used to be quite infuriating sometimes. They, they seem to alter the, the phasing and you sometimes you get hardly any, any cars through and it's just a nightmare. So whatever you may think, it's still nice to be able to have um, a, a way of just going and it certainly appears for most people to have speeded things up uh, uh, as far as travelling from A to B. Uh, I may be wrong but I, I, I see movement most times when I've gone along here. So now we've got a 30 mile an hour thing on the, on the road away. So let's increase our speed a bit. Um, more disabled, there's um, those phone boxes which no got no phones in, which is interesting. But it's very smooth. I mean, there's no question about it. Now that uh, bus stop, I, Chris Thomas was saying what hasn't been finished. And I said, well, a lot of the bus stops seem to be still the temporary ones. If this is on sign off, surely we should have proper enclosed or partially enclosed bus stops for the, the middle of winters. And uh, as somebody else pointed out, why have we not got the destination and, and the time to the next bus, which almost every major town, city in the UK have those, which are very useful. I mean, it's okay saying you can go on an app, which actually is not an app, it's more of a, it's a website, and see where the bus is. But wouldn't it be handy to have those electronic boxes fitted to all the new bus stops here on Douglas Promenade? For visitors, if nothing else, to see how we're getting along. Uh, you know, there's always a, a bit of an issue sometimes waiting for a bus uh, because obviously traffic problems here. I mean, we do have some. Anyway, this is, I'm recording this. Oh, he's pulling, no, wait for me. <laughs> I thought he was going to pull out. Um, this is obviously lunchtime. We're doing this in November. And of course, here we've got the, the tram track going down the middle here. We'll go back the other way and uh, obviously give a view from that side as well. This is always be, I've always wondered about this, this one, if this is, you know, you have to, I would normally do a little indication that I am going to keep on the road, because when I'm coming down Summerhill, you always like that acknowledgement that people know what you're up to. 
But um, yeah, here we go. This is the original part, of course, all those years ago. Gosh, when the first bit of red concrete was put down and we know about the tram tracks themselves having to be de-rusted. Uh, when I looked at them closely the other day, there was lots of water being re retained in, in those tram tracks, which I don't think is um, potentially a good idea because obviously that could lead to rust. Anyway, let's turn around and we'll go back the other way. So, a little turn around there. Beautiful day here. Um, I was coming along the other day and uh, the, the amber warnings were going in full swing. The, the water was chucking itself over the uh, prom. And uh, of course, in a, in a few days' time, uh, we have the opening of the promenade walkway for Christmas shopping, which is interesting because people have to be very aware of what the conditions could be like. It's OK when you leave your car, but you could come back to find the whole thing swamped. But I think they're going to try and presumably shut that down when that happens. But it's obviously a very handy for lots of people to be able to park their cars and do their shopping. So here we go. This is going along the promenade with the horse trams there in the middle. This is, the, the as it's been called, the journey to nowhere. It's causing controversy. Uh, it's still ongoing about getting the horse trams to go to the end. There's also this talk of potentially you could have real trams. I say real trams, you know, enclosed trams, not done by horses, but electric, which would be amazing. But it's been busy in the summer. Every time I've seen a horse tram, it has been busy. But of course, it still can cause massive pinch points here because you can't necessarily get um, a bus or a coach through here or a lorry. So you do find that you can be stuck behind something that's going to go the speed of a horse tram, which I don't know, it, it can be so frustrating and uh, something that we just, I suppose, have to be part of. But they're further apart, aren't they, than they used to be, those horse tram tracks, definitely, in my view. I suppose that's probably the new sort of health and safety about making sure there's spaces that everyone can get through and no one's going to be decapitated or whatever. There's a bus stop which has got a new, well, I don't know if it's new or it was there already, but uh, it's got an enclosed shelter. But as I was saying earlier about, um, wouldn't it be a good idea to be able to look up at a board to see when you, your next one is going to be turning up? I think so. It seems so obvious. Right, now we're going, that 20 on the floor, which wasn't there, that'll go now. So we meant to reduce. Now, here we go. This is this bizarre thing. Well, I say bizarre. This chicane thing. And if you're now turning right here to go down, is that Castle Moan Avenue thing? You can get held up behind there. I did a few weeks ago. And technically, you suddenly go, uh oh, I'm on the horse tram tracks. And this was in the summer. I'm going, uh oh. Luckily, nothing was coming. And those lights they're using at, to, to stop the cars when the horse tram is going, Initially, I, um, it seemed to be going when it shouldn't have. I mean, we just, I was here at 7 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> no horse trams, and the thing goes through the whole phase, and we stop. And you think, well, what are we going to do here? I mean, it could, you know, eventually it went back to green, but I hope they've ironed out those kinks, because very annoying. But um, anyway, back to the cultural centre now is coming up. Uh, a lot of people said, really, is that facing the right way, the roundness? Is this looking at the Stefan Hotel? And stefan has got a very nice new... Um, outside area, that when all that uh, work was done on, horse, on the promenade upgrades. But yeah, the cultural centre looking inwards, I don't know what people think about that one. Right, here we go. The, the bus is showing it's going to go round, but I'm just going to go a bit. Yeah, it's all right. He's not actually moved that. That's going to be an interesting one. So he's going to turn right way round. You probably find actually, oh, he hasn't actually. So you, <laughs> he was indicating, uh, but he's gone straight ahead. Right, there we go. I'm still kind of thinking long term these um, pedestrian crossing things. They don't look, the white seems to darken down fairly quickly. Maybe it does get to a certain phase and then be all right. You, you can't beat um, all this herringbone parking though. It's um, for me, I, I come down in the morning and two hours is fantastic. And I think that it's uh, obviously got more cars in, but overall, we have lost spaces. Um, back there, just before the chicane of the horse trams, there's a whole area just for motorbikes and I've pulled it up a few times saying there's no one for parking there. I mean obviously TT there is but overall I've been surprised how few bikes were going to park there but of course why would they want to park down there? They, they want to be probably nearer to where they want to go. So the interesting thing about reversing into those parking spaces of course is when you come down in the morning and you see one car not you just know as soon as you see it the plates are going to be UK plates and it's always that big debate do they actually bother finding anybody that's got a UK plate. Oh, now here's obviously um, 
the vans. I'm not sure what the, the thing is about vans. I thought, because that's obviously sticking out a bit, but um, here we go. Someone's pulling in, waiting for a space. That's okay, because we've got plenty of overtaking area. Although some people just stop and just hold the traffic up for no particular reason. Anyway, we're almost back to where we started. You can feel this, I mean, the smoothness is, is absolutely awesome. And uh, the sign-off is due. Chris Thomas is, is saying that everything is being done by the contractors. And then we wait for the first roadworks. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic on that one, but you know what I mean. You, how many roads you, you, you go on and get they're lovely and done, and then within like six weeks, seven weeks, I know, six months, they're drilling and digging them up to put something other in. But this is meant to be fairly future-proofed, I think. And uh, here we go. Obviously on the left is all this grass area, which eventually might be the horse trams, might be real trams. So that's it. November 2022. This is how it all looks on Douglas Prom. And no doubt we'll have another visit from time to time just to see how it's all getting on. Thank you.